Hi, I'm Ed Corazala from the University of Minnesota, here to make a spirometry video for the American Lung Association. Multiple studies have suggested that the quality of spirometry, especially in primary care, isn't where it needs to be. Spirometry is hard for patients because they're not expected generally when they go to a clinic visit to do something that's a maximal effort. And so it needs to be described and coached appropriately to get the best results. The patient should sit upright and we want to explain to the patient as we go. All right, Elizabeth, we're gonna do spirometry today. Now we've already measured your height and we've entered it into the computer. The next thing we need to do is get the spirometer ready to test. I'm gonna open up the mouthpiece by opening the back and sticking the tube in the little spot where it goes. This way I don't have to touch the mouthpiece and I just unsheath it and give it to my patient. Now what's gonna happen is gonna be some lights that flash back and forth and when it turns green, I want you to put it in your mouth and start breathing normal. When that happens, I'm gonna put a nose clip on your nose. Start with normal breathing. Nice and easy breathing. As you can see the flow volume loop, tidal breathing is a little circle. Now when you're ready, take your very deepest, deepest breath. Big breath, now blast. Go long, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Squeeze out all your air. Now, big fast in. We need to coach the patient to make sure they get all of their air out. Excellent. We need the patient to breathe out for a minimum of six seconds. Spirometry is hard for patients because it takes a maximal effort, but it's the only thing that's repeatable to decide if they have lung disease or not. 